Heartbreak and disappointment can come on you like an earthquake. There's nowhere to hide and you can't protect yourself from it. Question, how do you heal? How do you love again when your heart has been broken so many times? When you now feel as if you hate people, you would hate everyone around you. How do we recover from this? Let's discuss this to find a healing solution in this video. Today's journey will include scenes from Patea Beach, Thailand. As you get older, heartbreaks become more frequent and more severe. It gets harder and harder to recover from them. Let's work on fixing the heartbreaks of the past, the ones of the present, and decrease the likelihood of getting more in the future. When was your last heartbreak or grave disappointment? Which I'm sure is presently the most painful. Have you recovered? Do you blame yourself? How do you feel about that person? How do you feel about everyone around you? We are all guilty of pushing it under the rug, either because it makes us feel weak or we're embarrassed by it. The pain stops now. Say it with me. The pain stops now. The hurt stops now. I am taking back my life. I am hitting reset and I'm dealing with the arrows of the past because I will have a better future tomorrow. Starting in the present and looking back into the past. How do you choose people that you permit in your life? Go through and evaluate every relationship. Write it down. One relationship theory states that for every relationship you're in, you're getting something from it. Identify in each relationship, what are you getting from it? Is it emotional? Where you love the person? Is it passion, romantic, and sexual attraction? Is it a commitment where you've just decided to remain with this person? Is it financial, where you think that you cannot be on your own financially? Is it loneliness, where you're scared to be alone? Do you need to stay in the relationship for the children? Because of your religion? Because you just feel secure. The list goes on and on. The important thing is that you identify the reason and decide, is it enough? Once you identify why you're in the relationship, evaluate. What are the pros and cons of having this person in my life? Write it down. Does the pros outweigh the cons? Now you have identified it. It's a major step to healing. Go back into the past relationships that have caused you heartache. We're going to be writing it down. Do you blame yourself? Do you blame them? The blame game can go on forever. But what matters is you. You need the healing. You need to deal with that pain. And you need to move on. We don't forgive ourselves enough. Say it with me. I forgive myself. 
Repeat after me. The healing begins now. It doesn't matter who hurts you. The main point is that the hurt stops now. It doesn't matter who is to blame. It doesn't matter who is to blame. The point is you are going to be better tomorrow. Our natural response to heartbreak is usually not the best one. You can blame yourself, you can blame others. Then as time goes by, we sweep it under the rug to add to that big pile of pain that has been growing as time goes by. Let's stop adding to that pile because one day it will explode like a volcano when you least expect it. This only delays your recovery. Stop making excuses. The time to reclaim your life is now. Let's stop the emotional and mental suffering. Our friends and loved ones can sometimes lose patience when we take too long to recover, too long to move on. This causes us to lose social support and inadvertently causing us to lose compassion for ourselves and others, not to mention decreasing our self-esteem. This then, over time, leads to us acknowledging that I hate people or you hate people. But it's not true the people that you hate. You hate the pain that comes from having your trust betrayed, having your emotions being taken for granted, and deciding to never let that happen again. We project this emotion on everyone else out there. And I hate people. We were created as social beings to love and be loved. But in loving to be loved, we don't stop enough to evaluate. Is this person worthy of my love? If we should treat our emotion as we treat our cash, we would be in a much better place emotionally. Let them earn your emotion as they have to earn your cash. Let them earn your trust. When you meet someone, take a minute at a time. Evaluate that person. Who is she or he? Are they what you would consider to be a good or a bad person? Will they benefit my life and my well-being? Or will they inadvertently destroy it? We have to always ask the right questions. Don't be afraid of the answers. Stop making excuses for people. When someone shows you who they are, believe it. Don't try to shape them into what you want them to be. Don't look at how he or she treats you. Look at how do they treat others. How do they treat their friends? How do they treat their children, their parents? Even more importantly, how do they treat strangers? Each person that you permit in your life. Ask, what are they hoping to get from a relationship with you? What will you be getting from a relationship with that person? Identify it. Be true to yourself and in doing this practice in your present and future relationship, you can start feeling more secure again. You can start opening back your heart again, knowing that the chance is less likely that you will be hurt and disappointed because you have done your homework.